Well, look at this. We got home today and there's a huge parcel on the doorstep. This is containing, I believe, some weird stuff in a can. Let's open it up and have a look. So yeah, I know where this is from. This is from the German preparedness store, Convar Europe, which is all about, well, significantly about selling long-term storage foods. So these are the kinds of foods that you might lay in in case of emergency, or if you're stocking a survival bunker, or if you're going on a trip and you really just don't know what to expect, or on an expedition. So they contacted me by email because they'd found some of my weird stuff in a can videos where I'd reviewed a few things that I bought from Convar Europe on their website. Um, and they asked me if I wanted some free samples. So I really wasn't expecting a massive box like this. They've got some interesting products apparently, which do definitely fit into the weird stuff in a can series. And they've given me some free samples. So full disclosure, what we're looking at here is free samples that I've been sent by this company very kindly. That isn't going to change my review of what they are. Wow, look at this. Does that bit come out? Yes. Let's get rid of this cardboard. So wow, they have just got rid of the outer cardboard, but wow, look at the stuff they have sent me here. It's actually oh, three boxes within boxes. So let's get rid of some more packaging. And then we might be in a position to actually take stock of what we've got here. Look at this selection they've sent me. Quite amazing amount of stuff in these boxes. So let's have a look. There's a packing list here, but let's not do spoilers. Let's encounter these as we find them. Mega Street Wurst, which is like sausages of some sort in a sauce by the look of it. Looks like so slices of curry worst or something like that. So it's curry sausage in a sauce. So that's cool. Yeah, it's got a little Oh look, that there's sauce and a and a little tiny fork thing there as well. That's cool. Spoilers. We will review some of these on today's video. So I'm going to pick a couple of things out of here and we'll open them so that we are doing a proper weird stuff in a can episode. But of course, we're not going to get a chance to open all of this or else we just waste loads of it. So we've also got another street worst, um, which looks like another, well, a different, again, a different sausages in some kind of sauce. We will sort out what those are a bit later. We've got white bread, white bread in a can. And it looks like you can cut slices from it and toast it. Well, we'll certainly put that to the test. In the second package, we've got, we've got house bread. So again, this is gonna be some kind of canned bread and I can feel the loaf actually rattling around inside of there. That's interesting. So we've got two cans of bread, at least. We've got another one, land bread, which looks like it's some kind of wholemeal type of mixed wheat bread, yep. Yeah. Oh, I see, the house bread is rye bread. Right, should read the translations. They are there for a reason. Dinkle bread. So this is a spelt loaf. Cool. Wow. We've got Dos and Bistro Salmagen. And this is, let's see if we can find a translation. What have we got? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to work that out. Some kind of pork product with carrots, leeks, celery, and spices. So gonna have to Google that one before we try it out. I don't know what this actually is, but that's cool, that's a mystery. We've got col roulade. That's some sort of cabbage roll, I think. So that might be, might be like stuffed cabbage roll. That's gonna be cool, okay. We've got lasagna, lasagna in a can. Now I'm told this is the only canned lasagna available and that'll be interesting. I think we might have a look at that one in today's video. We've got lax mit kartoffeln. Well, I know kartoffeln is uh, potatoes. I don't know what 
Oh, is that salmon? Is that maybe salmon? Uh, yes, salmon with potatoes. How about that? And rinder roulade, which is looks like some sort of beef yeah, with potatoes and red wine, so and pork and bacon. So I'm guessing maybe if it says roulade, maybe some sort of again rolled up, uh, stuffed something or other. So how about that? That's really cool, isn't it? <clears throat> lots and lots of stuff in a can there. So thanks so much. Conva or other conserva. Conserva.de is the website where you can browse and buy these amazing variety of things. Let's just have a look because actually I want, one of the things I want to look at before we actually go any further on this is the expiry dates. So this one is it expires on the 4th of February 2030. So that's a loaf of bread that has got uh, like 11 years shelf life on it. Isn't that cool? And I think we'll probably find there's something, the same thing is true. Yeah, this one's 2029. This one is 2029. 2030. 2030. So I think we're going to find the same is true of most of those things in those cans. But what a cool selection of stuff. So I think what we might do today, these are very interesting, but I think we'll save them for a later video. So those street worst are an interesting concept. We'll save that for a different video. I think today we're going to have a look at lasagna and white bread. So I thought we'd look at lasagna and white bread. Now, what's weird about that, you may ask? The thing is with weird stuff in a can, sometimes the stuff in the can is weird because I've never seen it before or just it's strange contents. Sometimes it's the can itself that's weird, maybe the decoration or the shape or just the presentation of the can. And sometimes it's just the idea of finding a specific thing in a can that's weird. The idea of a white bread loaf in a can is a little bit strange and I'm going to see how good that is today. And lasagna is a very common dish, but I've never really ever encountered lasagna in a can before. So in terms of stuff you expect to find in a can, I'm just going to say these are pretty weird. So the ingredients on the lasagna are water, tomatoes, 16% beef, processed cheese, uh, which is butter, whey, cheese, water, milk, protein, melting salts, calcium phosphates, sodium phosphate and salt, tomato paste, gouda, uh, wheat flour, semolina, egg yolks, salt, onions, carrots, leeks, garlic, sugar, vegetable oil, which is palm oil and rapeseed, wheat gluten, basil, oregano, marjoram, savory, modified starch, beef extract, flavor, contains celery, yeast extract, maltodextrin, soy sauce, citric acid, thickener, which is xanthan gum. That does sound like they've made pasta and they've made a tomato sauce and put it together with some cheese. So that sounds relatively comprehensible as a set of ingredients. So ingredients for the bread are wheat flour, water, yeast, iodized salt, palm fat, sugar, wheat malt flour, dextrose, sugar beet fiber, malt extract, acerola juice concentrate, and just as warning may contain traces of nuts and eggs. We're actually going to translate. There's a little bit of blurb on here which I thought was quite interesting actually. This little blurb on the front here, I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to put a translation at the top of the screen to what that actually says on the front there. So this is claiming to be a fluffy white loaf inside this can. We will have a look at that in a minute. But first, let's get this lasagna open. Now, interesting thing with this lasagna is that there is a specific way to open this. There is a prescribed method of opening for this lasagna and it's going to surprise you because it's a pull tab can but the instructions are to use a can opener. Interesting, huh? What we have to do, we are instructed to open the bottom of the can first. Let's see if I can do that. But that, that can is off of there. Let's take that off. There we go, there's the bottom layer of the lasagna. A little bit of spoilers as to what that looks like. A little bit of liquid moisture there, don't know what that is. Looks a bit oily. 
and then we are to invert that onto there and then what we're supposed to do is open the pull tab here oh let's do that i was going to open this top with a can opener as well but we'll open the pull tab so there we go that's the top of those and you're not quite so pretty there and then we have to just loosen around the edge i think i was probably meant to do this from the other end i have not followed the instructions exactly to the letter and then the entire lasagna should drop out onto the plate pretty much so let's have a close look at it so well i can see layers in there i can see sauce i can see what might be a cheesy layer on the top so it does look pretty much the part Let's have a little sniff. It smells like sun-dried tomatoes, so it smells very tomato-y and very cooked. I think what we're going to do, we'll chop this in half so we can have a look at the internal sort of structure and layers here. And then I will carefully push it back together when I go and warm it up. And yeah, we can see. Let's have a look on that camera. You can see layers inside there. This is definitely looking like lasagna. We'll see in a moment how it stands up in terms of taste. But anyway, I'm going to warm that up before we eat it, just to give it a fair test. You could eat it cold out of the can. Obviously, it's cooked. It's completely sterile in that can. It's got to be if it's going to last 15 years. So, on to the bread. Now, this is interesting. And what we're going to do here, it is a pull tab can. And I feel stupid having to explain this every single time I open a pull tab can with my can opener. But the reason this time is not because the ingredients will splash on me because of the pull tab, but because pull tab cans leave a little rim around the inside of the can there. And this is a solid loaf of bread. We can actually hear it rattling around inside the can. If I leave that little rim on there, I'm pretty confident we won't get the loaf out in one piece. Whereas if I cut it off with a can opener, and we don't have that little lip to contend with. Yeah, if I'd not done that, I think we'd have had a rim on there that would prevent this loaf from sliding out in one piece. But there it is. Rather odd looking loaf of bread. Let's have a sniff. Okay, it smells a bit like um, malt, really. So it smells quite sweet and malty. Yeah, it smells like a kind of, like a malt loaf or something. So what we're recommended to do with this is cut it vertically into slices and then toast it to kind of bring it back to life a little bit. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll cut. A slice. Now let's just have a look. So it does look pretty dense. And the inside smells exactly as the outside did, but we're going to cut a normal thickness slice of bread here. I'm going to put that in the toaster downstairs and we'll bring that back up in here a minute. in a minute. I might put a little bit of butter on it, not butter from a can. I have had butter from a can from this very supplier, but we're going to have just a bit of bread and butter with our lasagna. So back in a moment and we will give this all a taste test. Okay, so here we go, fresh back from the microwave. That is probably too hot to eat right now. So let's have a look at the bread first. So I've toasted this for probably about a minute or two in a toaster. I'm gonna say it's not tremendously fluffy. It has got a little bit fluffy in the middle of there. Let's have a taste. I've put ordinary butter on there. Let's have a little taste. It's not bad. Hmm. Okay. Okay, that's very recognisably bread. It has gone a little bit fluffy from the heating in the toaster. You can see the crumb inside of there has gone lighter than it was certainly when it came out of the can. That's the uncooked bit there. That's definitely lighter and more fluffy now. It's been heated. In terms of flavour, it has more flavour than I would expect from a white bread. It's got more of a malty, yeasty taste than I've ever had in a white bread before. It's not unpleasant, but it's just not what I would normally associate with white bread. But in terms of texture, and obviously bearing in mind that has to survive for 
more than a decade inside the can. That's pretty, pretty much a triumph, I would say, really, to actually create a loaf of bread that will last that long in storage. So that's the bread. Pretty good. A bit weird, but very edible, very palatable, and certainly recognisable as bread. And if you have survived some sort of apocalyptic event and you've got this bread in your bunker, you're going to be pretty glad of it. Anyway, on to the lasagna. So this has been heated up in the microwave and it's now quite gelatinous and, and soft in texture. So it's kept its shape though. So let's take a bit of that. Actually, let's have a sniff now it's been warmed up. Yeah, so it smells more tomatoey now and it smells more fresh tomatoey. Before it was heated, it smelt a lot like sun-dried tomatoes, like a really cooked tomato flavor. But now it, it smells a bit more tomato sauce sort of flavor. Let's have a taste. Mm, flavour is spot on. Absolutely spot on for lasagna. I can't criticise that in the slightest. That's better, probably, than some of the ready meal lasagnas I've had from supermarkets. I'm going to say, of course, it's not as good as the lasagna I cook at home, but then everybody's going to say that anyway. But that is recognisably lasagna, and it's quite tasty. Mm. I'm definitely going to eat all of this. That's pretty good. So that's the lasagna, and definitely, given that, that again, that's got to survive a decade in a can, that's actually quite remarkable. So there'll be links in the video descriptions to the shop where you can buy this product. I'm not affiliated with them, although they did give me these samples for free. They're not cheap, I'm going to say that, but part of that is because of the manufacturing standards that have to go into making them so durable and so shelf stable. That has been white bread and lasagna on weird stuff in a can on Atomic Shrimp. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.